The common process that the estimating department frequently has to do is to update the status of uh, subcontractors that have been invited to a project. So for example, if they were scrolling down here, sort of by organization, they could find, say, for example, a company here, Lakeside uh, Equipment. And what they can do is they want to set Lakeside's equipment's ability to say that they're going to respond. When they right click on it, they can set go to bid status, say that they're going to bid. And by doing that, it will select the row, update the status, and it puts it up at the top of the column so you can continue to scroll down. So if you're also going to do Lakeside Roofing or Land Electric, you can just go ahead and continue right on down the list. It doesn't go back up to the top of the list, you know, for example, organization with A, um, so that you can uh, continue scrolling through your list and updating your people alphabetically. However, if it's sorted by status instead of by the organization, when you change the status, it's going to change the order that the contacts are displayed. That makes it much more difficult to scroll through the organizations alphabetically and update the statuses. So for example, here since I have RainGuard, if I select them and I say bid status equals bidding, when it resorts, it's going to show the RainGuard company here sorted by bidding status, and then I can't really see what the next company was going to be in my rows. So we strongly recommend that if you're going through the list of organizations and updating them, you make sure you sort by organization. In the event that you need to sort by discipline or by scope, we've provided a number of much better methods to actually update the status. First of all, you can select the different scopes you have. When you select the scope, it's going to only pick the users that match that scope for you to update the statuses. So for example, if you're now updating the status, status for the demolition groups, you can see you've filtered down your list. Now it's much easier to come through here, update the status, and you don't have to scroll through the list of hundreds or thousands of contacts. If you do have a large number of contacts in a, a um, scope here like demolition, you can select them all, use other actions, and click the invitee bid response. And what this allows you to do is see the list of the, let me bring this so you can see it, see the contacts that you've selected, click on one of them, update the bidding status, and move on quickly to the next one. This is not, um, not as fast if you're doing multiple select bidding, but it does allow you to walk through each of your bidders, adjust the status, see, add any comments, uh, and see additional information uh, about that contact in the event that you, um, uh, you know, have additional information and comments here that you want to enter. And just that easily, I've updated those three contacts, uh, bid status, by just walking through it. I also can, if I have a drop-down list and they call, I can very quickly pick any one of the users that I want and go quickly to that and update their status uh, from the screen right here. All right, so that should show you multiple different ways that you can set the bid status and some of the behaviors that help you understand how you can best update the status quickly and efficiently.